Well, Kevin, on Mad Men, you had a few episodes before this season. I think six I counted up as a guest star. But yes, this sir. season, you got to join the cast as a regular cast member playing Ted, the rival uh, partner over at another advertising firm. What was that news like uh, when you found out? Uh, that was exciting news. I mean, I was uh, when I got the job two years ago, it was two or three episodes is what they told me it was going to be, um, with no more information than that. And uh, at the end of last season, when I stole Peggy away, uh, Matthew Weiner said, you know, he was directing that episode, and he said to me, you know, we have, we have big plans for you next year. You never know what that means. So when I got the call over the summer that they were going to make, uh, they were trying to make the character a regular character, it was obviously very exciting. How, uh, just uh, two weeks ago, uh, we're taping this on May 13th, so we're about midway through the season, a little past midway. Your firm merges with Don Draper's firm uh, that we've been following all these years. How, how soon did you know that was going to happen? Uh, I found out when I read the episode. Uh, which was you know right before we shot it, so I was I was as shocked as the fans were. And like I said before, I'm I was a fan of the show before I joined the cast, and uh, um, I read the scripts as a fan first, and then I have to go back and do the work as an actor. And I and I was in a very uh, pleasantly surprised, I guess I would say. You can't reveal anything about what's coming up. I understand that on this type of show, especially with but Don. Can... Don Draper and uh, Ted are very different, and yes. that was that was mentioned last night when when Peggy goes in to talk to Don and said, "I thought Ted would rub off on you and not the other way." Right. What's your take on the differences in these two guys? Um, well, Ted doesn't have uh, the baggage that Don has. First of all, I would say um, I would also say that they just they handle themselves and they handle their people differently. They have a different point of view of how to motivate. Um, and I also I think one of the biggest differences is I think Ted's a collaborator. I think Ted wants the best out of his people, and I think uh, when it comes to ideas, the best idea wins. It doesn't necessarily have to be his idea. Um, I think Don gets caught up in whose idea it is sometimes, and I think he works alone. I would say it was I, I feel like uh, Ted's a collaborator. You can see that on the uh, at the table in the in the creative meeting where Don shows up late and. Uh, but but Ted has done. I guess he called it a rap session. He wanted to know everything they wanted to know about Marjorie. Right. Yeah. You know that's something you've never seen on the show before. You never see Don Draper go into the bullpen and say, "Okay, let's talk about the product and let's see what you guys ideas you have." He says, "Go to your thing, come back to your ideas, and then I will tell you if they're good or not." Um, so I think Ted's more hands-on and more involved. What about the difference between two small firms combining together into one big firm? Well, I think I think that's their only way to compete. I think uh, they've had great creative. I mean, it's talked in the in episode six when Don and I have that long scene in the bar when they decide to try to merge. Um, they realize, as Don says, this game is this this business is rigged. Uh, they can't compete with uh, the J. Walter Thompsons and the big firms who have thirty people flying out to Detroit to pitch. You know, um, and I think for them to compete and for them to survive, even. Their two firms uh, with the financial troubles they were having, it was their it was the, their only viable option, you know. Assuming that they got Chevy, which they did. Speaking of Jay Walter Thompson, in our forums every week after an episode airs, people just explode with comments and and good and bad and and so forth. But that week after, uh, we see your your threesome and Don's threesome pitching Hines. There right. was confusion all in our forums about who won the account. And I kept telling them, I think Jay Walter Thompson, who I'm in advertising, so I knew that name. Yeah, you picked I don't, it up. I said, I don't think either one of them won the account. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. And that was the way that that scene, um, a lot of the show is, is written this way where it's not spelled out for you. I mean, you have to really pay attention and and listen to what they're saying. And I, I was even, when I read it, I had I was confused a little bit of what was going on. But it's, when we came into the bar, uh, you know, my, I, Ted says, can we join the Lonely Hearts Club? Meaning that we're all losers, and then uh, and Pete, of course, is like, "How do you know we didn't win?" And I'm like, "Because they bought it in the room," and they, meaning they bought it. Mm -hmm. the and I don't know how I got that information, but that's the information I come into the bar with. Well, that was just another example of Heinz was perfectly willing to listen to two smaller firms, but they ultimately went with the biggest one. Exactly, which is a great setup for you know the next episode when Don and I are. Now working as hard as we can to get Chevy and realize that without without a big firm, without merging, that that's not possible. The same thing is going to keep happening to both of us.
Now, speaking of that bar scene, did you know about that inside joke on the drink you ordered, the old uh, Spanish? I, di I didn't when I read it. I, the first thing I said when I read it was, what the hell's an old Spanish? Um, and I was, I was informed of what it was, and then I was like, why would anyone ever drink that? And then Erin uh, Levy, the writer, uh, she's the one that told me. She was on set that day, and she was like, oh, this is, this is a callback to 30 Rock. This is a this is an inside joke. Well, and they've made so many Mad Men references over the years, and of course, John's been on, both Johns have been on there, and and uh, so I guess it was a way to return the favor in a way to uh, to, to to mention a, a fake drink from Thirty Rock. Yeah, and I was I was happily I was I was very pleased to be the one delivering it. Um, Man with a plan was the episode last night. We find out that you are a pilot. Are those kind of things? Are you aware of, of the backstory of Ted, or, or do you find him out when when uh, when we do? I find him out very shortly before you do. <laughs> um, uh, on that in that episode, I had tried the Janie Bryant, who's the costumer, who's amazing. Um, I had a, a extra uh, costume fitting the week before that episode, and it was to try on bomber jackets. And I was, I could not for the life of me figure out why Ted would ever be wearing a bomber jacket. Um, and then, of course, I got the script and figured out, you know, obviously realized that I was a pilot. And, but that's when I found out, was when, again, when I read the script. Uh, but it's interesting. This is how uh, specific they are on the show, on all levels of the show. Uh, if you go back and look at my office from the first time you see Ted's office back at CGC, um, there is an old wooden propeller as a piece of art against the wall. There, one of his, I think his stapler is in the shape of an airplane. There's a tachometer, an old tachometer that's in brass that's sitting on his desk. Um, but it's stuff you, it never pointed out, never, never, uh, there's no close-ups on any of this stuff. So you, unless you're really paying attention, you wouldn't see it. And I had that stuff for two years and didn't think twice about it. Just thought, oh, he likes airplanes, or maybe his dad flew, or it's just, so he, you know, hired a decorator, and that's what they put in there. So they, they knew this, this cool fact about Ted probably long before they ever even wrote it. I assume. I assume they didn't tell me. They gave that dynamic between him and Don a, a different level, I think, last night, because Don, in almost every situation in his whole life, uh, and even more so with the scenes with Linda Cardellini last night, he's in control. He's always right. in control. And in that scene, he was totally not in control. For the first time in a long time, we've seen him completely out of control. And, it's again, it's testament to the writing staff and, and to Matt Weiner of how, how smart they are of putting – of building Don up to that place and then putting him in that position. Tell me about working relationships with a couple of these people. You probably had most of your scenes uh, either with John Hamm or Elizabeth Moss in terms of regulars. Uh, right. Tell us about working with John. What's he? What's he like as a fellow actor? Uh, he, first of all, he's not Don Draper. That's the first thing about John Hamm. Is he's he's uh, he's a Midwest guy. He's a really good guy. He's um, unbelievably smart and quick and funny. He's a great game player. We play a lot of um, in our downtime on this on the show. We play a lot of dominoes and a lot of cribbage, and uh, he he tends to. Win. I bet he's pretty competitive. Unbelievably so, <laughs> and, and, and likes to win. Very much likes to win. Uh, and he's, been, he's the best part about John is he's a great scene partner. Um, it's it would be easy for someone in his position to. Um, I've seen that in the past, and uh, he's he's there for the scene. Whatever makes the scene better, whatever tells the story better, that's what he wants to do. And the same with Lizzie. I mean, Elizabeth, uh, I mean, I, most of the stuff up to that episode I was with Lizzie, obviously. And um, they're, they're two of my favorite people. They're two of my favorite actors and two of my favorite people. Yeah, just the look, the expression on her face when the two of you tell her that, you know, all this, this, uh, this gumption I guess she had last season to leave... And now she has to go back. Right. What, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's, you know, she has that great scene with Dawn in episode seven where she's like, you didn't even ask me to lunch. Mm -hmm. Of course, making it about her character. Uh, but, yeah, I just, she's, um, I, now I forget the question. <laughs> oh, just just talking about uh, her and that, that reaction and that scene in particular. Oh, yeah, she's, she, her reactions, her and, her and John, and, well, all the cast of this show, uh, Christine is the same way. They they can uh, tell so much with their faces and their eyes that's not written on the page that without the information they give you and their reactions, the story's not being told. You're like you'd be lost because it's so dense. The writing of the show. It's like I said. It's not you know we're not solving a crime every week. So you know 
we're not spelling everything out. So you really have to pay attention and you get to follow them for what they're doing that's not on the page. Yeah, that scene the previous week um, where she's with her boyfriend and he's talking about, you know, they're still talking about moving and he says something about, you know, having kids with her. And she didn't say a word, just her whole, I'm sure you saw the, the episode too, the whole reaction of her on the couch was great. Yeah, she, I mean, she, she can do it all. Um, and when you work with a, somebody on that's a cast member like John Slattery last night who directs the episode, yeah, what's it like working for an actor director? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's got to be a that's got to be one of the toughest jobs, especially when you have a lot of stuff. Just because you're that was you're a complicated filming. episode last night. I had a lot of stuff going on. Unbelievably complicated. Not easy to shoot, and especially to to do what he did, which is which is do it well. Um, that's not easy to do on any level, and then to have to split your focus in the scenes that you're, you know, having to act in. But John is such, you know, he's first of all he's a great guy as well. I mean, this is the only show where people come early and stay late that I've ever been on. People want to hang out there; uh, they enjoy each other that much. Um, I know that's a cliche. Everyone talks about how great their cast and crew is, but this is actually true. Um, but uh, John is great at Slattery. He's great at. Um, at giving direction, he's he's such a good actor himself. He sees things so clearly. He can say the simplest thing to you that will completely turn uh, and make your performance better. I mean, that scene in particular, the scene uh, last night after after uh, Draper gets me hammered at work, and the next morning I'm in the hospital. Um, that you know, Slats is he's just amazing at pulling out of you what you didn't know was possible. You mentioned uh, coming, you know, working and working early, working late. I remember a couple of years ago. I think it was Matt Weiner telling us that Robert Morris, who's not in a lot of a lot of episodes or even in a lot of scenes, just comes around and hangs around set all week long, whether he's in the episode or not. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, it's the only show where people come early and stay late. Like I, I, uh, you know, usually you your call time and you figure out how long, it, depending on where you're shooting in LA, how long it's going to take you to get there, and you give yourself a little leeway, and that you go then. Whereas on this show, if I have a twelve o'clock call. You know, I'll go in nine, ten o'clock just to hang out with the people. Especially people like you know, I I've known Jay Ferguson for ten years. We worked together on another show, and uh, we rarely get to work together uh, as actors until the merger. And so for the first six episodes, I would I would come in early when I knew he was working, just so we could you know play dominoes together. And watching on a show like this, where there's a lot of scenes, a lot of different things that you're not even involved in as an actor, do you look forward to watching it on Sunday night just as much as the rest of us? Absolutely. I mean, that's half the reason. I mean, I, I obviously I, I want to see how my stuff turned out, but um, and but I I'm always more interested in what's going on elsewhere because I only see it. I read it once, you know, when I'm looking at the script overall, and then I hear it in the table read, but just to see how that turns out because it's always very different than what you expect. Our table reads are funny. It's like we'll get uh, huge laughs on very odd things in the table read that either that won't be funny at all on the show because they're you know played differently and they're darker or whatever. Um, and then other things that didn't seem funny at all or as interesting to me in the table read. And then when I see it on film, I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I think the funniest thing last night, poor Bert Peterson. Hey, uh, John, uh, <laughs> Roger gets to uh, fire him yeah. all over again. That was, uh, that was, for anybody that's followed the show a long time, that was very funny. You stole my goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the line from Roger. Speaking of Robert Morse, tell everybody what you were telling me earlier. I know it only affects people that, that would live in your area, but, but uh, he's going to do something unique, I think, uh, to help you out. Yeah, well, he won a Tony for uh, a, a pretty much a one-man show on Broadway called True, based on Truman Capote uh, 20 years ago or so. And uh, I'm in a theater company, and I belong to a theater company in Venice called Pacific Resident Theater, and I've been with them since I moved here practically like eight, 98, uh, is when I think when I started in that theater company. And we're doing a reading, a uh, stage reading of, of that play. He's going to do it as a benefit for the theater. I think we have to, I think the date is the sometime next month. I think it's the 10th or the 9th or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he also won an Emmy for that, the only Emmy he's ever won. Yes. Uh, yeah. He won, a, I think, a couple of Tonys, but that was the only Emmy award he got right. uh, for, the, for the, uh, I guess, the recorded version of that same stage show. Right. And he's, he's amazing. I went over to, I was at his house last week, and we kind of went through the script and trying to figure out how to simplify it, obviously, because it's a, it's a staged reading. He's not going to do the whole, whole thing off book. Um, 
but just sitting down and listening to him, he immediately went into the voice, and I was like, holy cow, that's amazing. Um, and just you could see it all coming back to him as he's reading through the script and like started to enjoy things and remember things, and uh, it's just amazing to, to, to watch that, especially one-on-one. I grew up watching him too. Uh, I guess some of the Disney kind of movies in the '70s, and and uh, then I caught How to Succeed in Business later on as the movie, which right. I just think is so tremendous on the part of the producers to hire him to play um, a business kind of a role that, that's set in the '60s. I just right. as an older man, right? Smart, smart, very smart. Well, I want to ask you a couple of other. Um, past questions, career questions. You're now on a show called Mad Men, focused more on the men, but you've come off a couple of shows that were focused more on the women, uh, right. Desperate Housewives being one of them. What's the difference in terms of an actor? As far as an actor, I mean, honestly, there's not much of a difference. It's, it's perception. I mean, you, I, I, I do the same work. I get the, I get a script and I look at the scenes and figure out what's happening and, and, and then do my work as an actor. So, it, tonally, obviously, it's very different. Um, although I think Mad Men has a better sense of humor than than I think a lot of people realize, especially who aren't fans of the show. If you're a fan of the show, you realize there's a lot of funny in there. But uh, uh, the work to me is the same, whether it's a, whether it's a multi camera sitcom or or Mad Men or Desperate Housewives. You, you know, I do the same work. It's just the perception is different and, and the writing is different. What kind of reaction from fans did you get when you were on Desperate Housewives? Uh, very kind. I mean, I the, the character. I was very lucky in the sense that the character was great. I mean, that's and that's why I, I was happy to do it. Um, they wrote really well for Lee McDermott, and they. Uh, I mean, I always got the funny, and in, in, in every scene I was in, they gave me the funny, and uh, and they kept doing it. So I, I actually, in L.A., it's funny because a show like that is not as popular in L.A. as it is outside of L.A. There's like there's a weird divide, and Mad Men's much more popular in LA than you know something like Desperate Housewives, or at least people who don't admit to it. So I would get more of a reaction for Housewives when I would leave the city, whether it be going back to Louisiana or Texas, or or actually when I was in Ireland, you would have thought that I was one of the friends back in the day, like they would, <laughs> because they have three TV stations, and that was the number one show in the country, and it was on at the time when I was there it's two years ago now, and you know literally people stopping their cars in the middle of the street to get out. Just when they saw me on the sidewalk to take a picture, like it was crazy. Um, Mad Men doesn't garner that kind of attention, um, but it the it's a lot more people in the business. I, I think uh, watch it more intently, and that's that's exciting. Um, but again, I like I, again, it's a well written part that I get to play, and that's the most exciting thing. Now we're like I said earlier, about halfway through the season. Um, um, is there anything at all you can tell us? <laughs> anything, any moment that's coming up. Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> not a, not a thing. Um, you know, the title I, of the next episode is the crash. What does that mean? The title of the next episode is the crash. Um, well, I think that's what it said. I can, if that is the title, which I cannot confirm nor deny, um, I can tell you it's not about 1920. Okay. That's. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I can't. They. Uh, um. Every time I do an interview, there's this constant uh, uh, check in the head of like what has already been shown versus right. what hasn't been shown, and and I always do the interview as if Matt Weiner was sitting across from me. Ah, good smart move. I, I've told many people, especially people on on dramas over the years on these uh, on these chats, you know, don't do something that's going to get you thrown down the elevator shaft. I remember that uh, from L.A. Law, you know, twenty something years ago. Right. Uh, that's that's where that comes from. Where. Uh, Rosalind, the the, uh, the the partner, just was talking to somebody and then went down the elevator shaft. So yeah, yeah, and and, and with all the elevator openings on this show, it's it's dangerous. Well, anybody could could leave at any moment, as 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 they prove proven over the years, over and over again. Well, good luck with everything on the show. I hope I hope we see you for a long time to come. I hope the crash doesn't mean anything bad for you, um, but we'll have to wait till Sunday to see. Right. And right. Uh, really appreciate your time. Oh, uh, a quick question on the Emmy Awards. You're going to be in that supporting actor uh, category on the ballot, where uh, Jared Harris was nominated last year, and right. John Slattery's been nominated a few times. Um, assuming it's not an episode coming up, would would you think maybe last night's episode would be the one that would you would submit? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to look at how the rest of them turn out, but, uh, of, of them so far, six and seven, obviously, are the ones that, uh, I had the most to do in, and I think, 
as far as arc. I mean, there was there was great stuff in in, uh, in six too of what you know, three right. big events happen in that episode. But yeah, so far those two, and then and then we'll see um, how the rest of it shapes uh, shape, shapes up. Well, I hope it's a great end of the year for you, and I uh, hope you have a great summer. Appreciate your time. I hope you all enjoy the rest of it, and I. I